Now let's talk about collection. The funny thing is, in this topic, we have three different types of collection. It starts with small c, which is a collection API. So let me just write it out somewhere. Uh, so we have a concept called collection API. Uh, then we have a collection and we have collections. Now this is the only thing I, I think it's confusing in this topic. Now when I talk about collection API, I'm talking about a concept. When we talk about collection, I'm talking about an interface. And when you talk about these collections with S, it is your class, okay? Uh, so if I say, hey, something belongs to collection API, that means it belongs to this concept. If I say collection, I'm talking about the interfaces and then there are some classes which implement this. And then uh, we'll talk about collections, which is a class and it has multiple methods to work with. Okay, now why I'm talking about collection here? So the thing is, whenever you want to group the elements, right? let's say if you have one value, you can store that in one variable, right? I can simply say int uh, num is equal to five and I'm, I'm happy, right? The only thing is, what if you want to have multiple values? Now that's what problem creates. How do you store multiple values? And I know you know the answer, right? The answer is array and we have worked with it, right? So I can simply create a nums here, which is an array and I can say new int and bracket. I can mention the five, size, which is five. Now this is your array, right? And it perfectly works. Okay, then why are we are talking about this collection topic? See, the thing is, if we talk about working with data, if we talk about working with algorithms, there is a concept called data structures, right? And I hope you have heard about that in multiple places, right? Data structures are very important. The way you fetch data, the way you, the way you store data is very, very important. Now, sometime, example, let's say if you store data in a box here, now, sometime you want to save data and you want to fetch the last element. Okay, so whatever element has been inserted last, you want to maybe you want to fetch that. Or maybe uh, you, you have another type of data where you want to insert data in this values and the value you want to fetch is the first value, right? So this is where I'm talking about the last in, first out. And this is where I'm talking about first in, first out. Just like a normal queue, right? Example, if you want to take a ticket, you go, you stand in a queue, right? In the same way, this concept which I'm talking about here is Q. Uh, the concept which I'm talking about here is stack, right? Now, apart from this, there are multiple data structures which you want to work with, right? And we can actually implement all these data structures with the help of array as well. There's no harm in that. So as a programmer, you need to do it, right? And it's good, you know, it's fun. The only thing is when you work on a project, you don't want to actually work with an array where you create this structure by yourself. And that's where they thought, hey, can we just create an API? And the beauty is it actually introduced in the second version of Java 1.2, uh, the collection API, where you can actually work with all these data structures. Apart from this, we also have linked list, right? So you can work with all these things by using some inbuilt classes. So it makes your work much, much easier. And also when you want to fetch data, when you want an expandable array, that's right. The thing is the array which we have worked with, it is fixed size. Example, if I create an array of size five, it will be five, right? Uh, you can't extend it. What if you have a scenario where you want to expand an array? Maybe you want an element, you want an array of seven now. Uh, so of course in the existing array, you can't do that. Okay, now that's one problem. Of course, you can find a solution for this as well. What you can do is you can create a new array, let's say nums2, and you can say new int, and you can mention seven here. So you got a new array of size seven, and then you can copy all the elements from the above array. But the thing is you have to manually create an array, you have to copy the array, and it sometimes it becomes complex to do all those things. What if you can just get a class or this feature where you can create an array which is dynamic, right? So it's quite exciting to work with collection API where you can store data and you can use different algorithms to work with it. What if you want to sort the array? What if you want to create an array of unique values? What if you want to have an array, two arrays, one where you have all the keys, one you have all the values? Okay, so an array, of course, as I mentioned before, in array you can do it, but then what if you can get some API using which it will help you in writing a code? Now that's where we can we are going to use collection API. Of course, array makes sense in most of the cases when you know that the length will be fixed. So you will be using array. Now, whenever you have a specific requirement of different algorithms and structures, that's where you will be using collection API. Now, how to use collection API? That we'll see in the next video.